Hello traders, my weekend video. And I'll give you a quick rundown of what I'm seeing uh, setting up this week. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize, we have like four expirations on SPY this week. You got, the, I mean, just virtually every day of this week, we have expirations on the uh, on SPY. Um, and uh, it's got that, plus we got the biggest earnings week of the season this week. And all kinds of data and information hitting the tape this week. It's just going to be, uh, it's going to be very difficult to uh, uh, keep track of everything. There's so much news going to be hitting the tape. So basically, uh, what I'm seeing here in the markets, what I did here on this chart, I've got the the uh, uh, purple one here. That's the historical volatility, and then the blue in here. That's my implied volatility. And what I did here on a one-hour chart uh, on this spy. Uh, last Friday, um, two weeks ago, uh, we had OPEX, and uh, in that day, if you don't remember, uh, they were crushing the VIX going into OPEX expiration, and they crushed hard the historical volatility that day. Okay, well, we this past Friday we had a different scenario. Uh, we granted all, both the implied volatilities came down for the day. But what really got crushed Friday was the implied volatility. That's the front-ended uh, volatility going into this week's earnings. And this is the biggest earnings week of the season, okay? And all kinds of earnings hitting the tape this week. And for some reason, traders seem to think that they did not need additional insurance going into this week's earnings. So there is a definite animal spirit as of Friday, they had a definite, definite animal spirit going into this week's earnings. So definitely, that's 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 my takeaway going from um, the implied volatilities. And so you can look at this uh, in a different way if you want here on the VIX, VX futures. And if you go and uh, trade the VX. And basically here on the front month, uh, the active contract, it was down 2.775, uh, you know, uh, for the day on Friday. And if you go out about 60 days, uh, yeah, 52 days, it's only down about 2.025%. So basically, the, uh, the this represents the, the historical volatility, and then the, uh, the front month represents the implied volatility. It gives you a little bit of an idea of how to define uh, those two lines on my chart, okay? And gives you a, a little bit clearer picture of what I'm seeing. Uh, but basically, we were closing on animal spirits into the close there on Friday. And uh, but one thing, one other takeaway I did want to take on this, uh, uh, well, on the VX futures. Let's see here. Let me maximize this one here, and I'll show you here. Uh, basically, uh, we came down on this moving average, and we tagged that as of Friday, and this is on a daily basis. And this is my intermediate trend, and we are on the bearish side of this intermediate trend for volatility going, and, and we are crushing down Friday going into this week on the key earnings. And a lot of these earnings, some of the data that's coming in is going to be before the, uh, the uh, crisis, corona crisis actually hit. So that's going to help support some of these earnings. So to keep that in mind going forward, um, you know, but so many of these companies aren't even going to be given guidance. So you're basically, you know, whatever, if you buy something, you're, you're trading it with no type of uh, gauge of what to expect in the future uh, without them giving any type of guidance. So, you know, just something to keep, uh, you know, note noteworthy here. But in this area right here, I wanted to point out the below average volume. Here's our average line and the below average volume on this VIX. Um, so, you know, uh, basically keep that in mind. You know, we're getting the muted volume here. Uh, a lot of this volume has come off since we went to total automated trading on the NYSE and the CBOE. So keep that in mind, you know, how the volatilities have or how the volumes have really come out of the VIX. Uh, so definitely something to be of noteworthy going into this week but we are like a you know it does look like we're setting up for the first of the week with a bullish sentiment going forward into the first of the week now to what further supports this just how 
much of a divergence of your, your implied volatility and your historical volatility has just completely exploded out of uh, the queues. You know, this the, the Q price can, is, is, is definitely uh, leading the way here. Uh, darn, I didn't want that. Uh, the Q price is definitely leading the way here, and this is telling us there is definitely animal spirits in the hues going into these numbers. Uh, rightfully or not, I just want to, you know, there's definitely an obvious trend that, you know, uh, monies are being put to work in the queues going into this week's earnings. And uh, the core of the queue numbers are hitting this week. So definitely something to be aware of going into this week. You know, the animal spirit nature that we're seeing here in that scenario. And then uh, it's the it's not quite nearly as quite as pronounced, you know. Um, you got the volatilities coming in, uh, you know, but we do have a little bit of, a, of some animal spirits coming into the uh, IWM, you know. Uh, just uh, another one to keep in mind here, and then your diamonds on your implied volatilities, and uh, so something to keep in mind here. Uh, this thing here looks to be stall more stalling to me on the diamonds, but. Definitely a lot of things happening this week uh, going forward. Uh, another takeaway here, you know, you have your, um, we had this nice little consolidation pattern going on here on the ES futures. Uh, we're still holding this primary uptrend coming into some really critical data hitting the tape this week. Uh, typically, on a monthly basis, uh, going into critical numbers here, uh, knowing what's happened in the markets. Typically, this would be a short uh, place to short on the ES futures uh, from based on uh, volume profile theory. So just keep that in mind going forward here. I mean, uh, definitely we can rally up. There's no question. And Friday was telling us that it was more of a bullish bias uh, setting up going into this week's earnings. But definitely that's what I wanted to point out here is you know, maybe we get a breakout on these earnings. I, I don't know. That's just something that I am keeping a close eye on here going forward here. And we have these MAs above us. Uh, here's our 21 MA on the on the monthly. And in our, uh, I can't remember which one that is. That's the 200 MA here on the monthly as well uh, above us. So we're below both those monthly and moving averages going into the first earnings event since the coronavirus actually hit the tape. Definitely something to keep on watch going forward here. Uh, you got your cues. If I can get this pull up. And uh, like I said, uh, where's that at daily? Similar situation. You know, if this is actually a more bullish chart, you know, like I said, uh, it's, it's moving away from our downtrend, you know, and showing some relative strength. And we do have room just to even get back to the value area high for our cues. So uh, definitely something to keep in mind and a lot of uh, momentum coming into the uh, technology space. And then finally on our IWM here, another uh, one daily. And basically, you know, we're above value here uh, on our IWM. So for the month of... Um, March, this is this is the value we will build out for March, okay? And we're above uh, April's value uh, for uh, right here, right now, coming into this week's earnings. Uh, an unprecedented, horrible uh, energy uh, information coming out. Uh, we are still showing some relative strength versus the March levels. And uh, just something, a takeaway that I'm seeing here, um, you know, going forward into next month. We've only, uh, we've only got a few days left here, and we have a much tighter range building out for next month, a much more compressed range up here near the highs of uh, last month's area building out. Uh, another thing coming into this week on the high-yield bonds, uh, I got this historic volatility on here, and as you can see right here, uh, right there, we have been pushing below this prior swing low. Uh, on the historical volatility on our high yield bonds. So this is a tell to me that with the Fed coming in here, backstopping the high yield bonds, that, um, you know, uh, is supportive of high yield bond prices. 
in my opinion, and the dips probably uh, suggesting the dips probably are viable on the high yield bonds, and that is bull that it tends to be more bullish the markets. Now we had a sell signal there Friday on the high yield bonds, but so this is something I definitely want to keep on watch going forward here. And uh, if you look on a longer time frame here, uh, one second, let me pull it up. Okay, uh, we closed right on that uh, daily. 20 SMA, we're doing the back test of the 20 SMA at the 50% FIB on the high yield bonds. So definitely, this is something I want to keep knowing Uncle Sam's coming in there and supposedly supporting the high yield bonds and uh, and the longer end, I, the longer end of the volatility seems to be getting crushed. Here, pri the prices are coming down on the high yield bonds, but they're cr they're crushing the volatility going forward here. So this suggests to me a buy point on the high yield bonds coming into this week. So definitely something I want to keep on watch going forward here. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm naturally bearish this market. Uh, everything tells me the markets need uh, are way too expensive here. I mean, you know, logically, if it wasn't for all the government spending, you know, these markets would be in all kinds of trouble like 2007. And uh, the Fed's already spent uh, dang near as much as they did back in 2007 to bail the economy out. Uh, and now we've even got a state, state bailout coming out. And like I said, like Lloyd said in the room, his wife has been told not to expect to go back to work till September in, in the New York area. And Chicago is really bad right now, too. So we're talking New York and Chicago could be shut down till September. So uh, a portions, uh, large portions of their... Uh, cities to be shut down until September. So definitely something to be aware of uh, going forward here. Okay, we're starting Monday with applied materials. It was already having troubles before, uh, a little bit of troubles there on the last earnings. And uh, now we have the nice little correction here. Uh, basically, um, you know, it's hard to say what's going to happen here, but uh, I'm more on the bearish side. This is a major industrials with a uh, major exposure in Europe. So something definitely I'm watching. PPG, uh, painting supplies, they've already announced last quarter. They were having problems last quarter before all the other stuff was happening. Uh, they were guiding lower. And, you know, maybe, maybe they've come in far enough. I don't know. Uh, just something I'm keeping on watch here. Uh, earnings are out Monday. FFIV. Uh, uh, this is, a you know, one of the tech... Companies, darling tech companies, definitely something to watch here. It looks like an inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, potentially here. So definitely something I have on watch here. Uh, is it justified to have prices? You know, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you if these prices are justified uh, considering the uh, next quarter is going to be horrible for so many stocks. So definitely something to watch. Uh, CNI, that's a railroad. It's going to give us more. Uh, stuff. Oil's not being shipped. Auto's not being shipped. I mean, uh, has it come in far enough? I don't know. Just something definitely to watch. Canada's really have uh, struggling here with because uh, they got so much of their um, uh, income off of oil production, and that's pretty much getting completely shut down this next quarter. It looks like definitely something looks really bearish. Don't want to go to the long side. Three um, M. Uh, it's got the mask exposure, but that's about it. So just keep that in mind going forward here. Um, you know, it's well below, uh, the, uh, monthly value, uh, should be way up here on the 3M. Uh, just something to keep on watch here uh, going forward. Uh, I, I just think it's, you know, the forward guidance and stuff. It's going to be another one that's not even going to give us guidance. So Pepsi, uh, Pepsi's coming out, uh, likely to have problems. People aren't getting out worldwide. So this is another one, you know, keep on watch here. Is it really justified at these high prices? Because uh, if you look at what happened to Coke uh, so from, from their earnings, you know, uh, they've been kind of liquidating it since the earnings came out on Coca-Cola. So, you know, that might be a, a proxy for what's happening there. Pfizer. Uh, a lot of money coming into the healthcare space, and uh, they've already bid it up considerably. Um, just definitely something to keep on watch here. 
Um, this is the area because there's so much government money going into R&D and stuff with the coronavirus. Um, you know, I'd have to be very hesitant to try to short any type of uh, uh, pharmaceuticals or, you know, uh, biotechs, um, knowing that there's so much government dollars being spent here, emergency dollars. Okay, UPS likely to really get hit. Um, I just you just never know. And this is a uh, Tuesday, so keep that in mind. You know, to, UPS is already struggling, really struggling before this crisis hit. So uh, definitely, and they've really not come in not hardly at all in the midst of this crisis. So definitely something to be worried about. I hate to have this bearish tone. I'm just trying to get a comparison to bear. To the uh, caterpillar is going to get rocked. Um, I don't know if it's going to actually show up. Depreciation is definitely going to be theme, um, you know, for caterpillar going forward here. Uh, at, at residual values on the lots and stuff are getting creamed uh, for automobiles, and you know, uh, industrial equipment even gets hit harder. So you know, supply and demand. You have you have far a far smaller base for demand for industrial equipment versus automobiles. So this area tends to get even hit harder in a recession or a depression era. So definitely something to keep in mind going forward here. Um, you got Merck reporting. I don't want to get this thing too long. I may not be able to do the whole week's here earnings because I'm getting a pretty long. Like I said, a lot of money coming into that space. I'd much rather, uh, I, I, I don't want to be necessarily short into earnings going into any type of uh, healthcare related uh, stocks, uh, in my opinion. Um, not saying I'm not being bullish. I'm just saying I don't want to be short. Okay. Okay. Southwest Airlines, uh, you know, this is all looking bad for, uh, you know, for, you know, until we get into uh, later into uh, next quarter, um, I don't even want to touch uh, airlines. Uh, I think, uh, we, we actually got to start seeing signs that we're going to uh, start uh, seeing bookings picking up in the airline space before I won't even touch this stuff. Uh, BP. Yeah, we got negative crude right now. That There's nothing about this. <laughs> you know, uh, I just, you know, there's just nothing I can do with this, you know. You're basically having to shut down all their operations because, or most of the operations because, you know, you got negative crew prices. You know, why who in the heck wants to pump crew out of the ground if you can't, you have to pay to get rid of it. I mean, I know this might be short-lived and we may have hit a bottom, but they're still losing money. I mean, they're losing money uh, like BP and stuff like that. You, you, got, you got to be over $30 a barrel and we're giving it away. So, um, yeah, a lot of problems there. Uh, going forward into this quarter. Uh, hog, uh, like I said, residual values on the lot are just getting creamed, and this is more specialized like Caterpillar, uh, likely to take a really big hit. Uh, that whole generation about those motorcycles is uh, selling them, actually uh, liquidating them. They're getting too old to drive those motorcycles, so, you know, it's a double negative for uh, Hog. So Cummins, uh, auto industry, under a lot of pressure, Residual value is going in the toilet. A uh, lot of lot of reasons to think Cummins is going to have problems going forward into second quarter. Um, you know, uh, Tuesday afternoon, AMD. Uh, they're pricing this like it's going to the moon. So, what can you do? Um, is this going to be a fifty-two week breakout going into the the midst of this disaster? I I, I don't know. You know. Uh, they're pricing it like that uh, this is really cheap for AMD at these as price points. I don't know. Uh, just keep that one on watch. Google ad revenue. Everybody knows the ad revenue is going to be bad. Is it priced in bad enough? That's the question. You know, is Google's, you know, bad revenue bad enough right now that, you know, it justifies higher prices? It's hard for me to say. So uh, basically on a monthly basis, the value for uh, a Google uh, in a very bad, very bad tape, uh, the 1170 area is more of a so $100 less uh, is more of a uh, fair value. Uh, so we're basically overvalued going into the numbers uh, on a volume weighted basis. Okay. Um, 
Starbucks. <clears throat> Basically, everything shut down. All the inside stuff so shut down here in the states. Uh, uh, it was shut down really hard in your in China, most of the quarter. So this is actually probably going to have uh, a much greater impact versus the Corona versus uh, a lot of other stocks. So just keep that in mind going forward uh, because of their uh, huge China exposure. They're going to take a bigger hit initially off the uh, Corona, in my opinion. Uh, you got Ford, Ford reporting. It's in the toilet. Hell, they're not producing. So oh, what do you do? And there's, there's rumors that uh, they might have to file bankruptcy. Um, which could would be probably August area or something like that. Um, got Boeing reporting. It's in the toilet. Uh, orders are or orders are being canceled. Uh, a lot of bad news, bad headlines. Back to 50, most likely back to fifty two week lows. In my opinion, uh, it's in a downtrend. You don't want to fight the trend. That's definitely the case. Um, you got Mastercard. Um. You know, so far, the, the credit card companies haven't been quite as bad as what people had expected. So something to definitely keep on watch here. Only four. Has Visa reported yet? Let me double check that. Uh, Visa hadn't reported yet either. So keep that in mind going forward here. Yeah, like Capital One Financial, I think it reported last week. Uh, look at this. Uh, you know, uh, it had its earnings. Um, so basically... The initial reaction on the earnings uh, it sold off initially on the on the on the uh, on the earnings and then it popped. American Express. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, pretty much flat on American Express. That was last week. So basically, they're not really the uh, the selling pressure is just not there for the uh, credit card companies. They might uh, be happy with the prices at this price point. So something to definitely keep in mind here going forward. Um, I don't know. What do I want? Oh, Anthem's reporting, and United Healthcare really had a good good quarter. So definitely one I want to keep on watch here. Uh, uh, like I said, United Healthcare had a very good quarter. Um, so... I want to keep that one on watch. And then we have a lot of uh, uh, defense contractors reporting. And like I said, their uh, uh, government contract, uh, the money's coming in for their big government contracts have been accelerated. So there's going to be a lot of infusion of capital they hadn't planned in the defense spending space, like General Dynamics, Norfolk Gunman, you know, uh, some things to think about here. Um, going forward here, uh, real quick, like we do have Tesla, uh, big thing about Tesla, they do have, uh, for the past couple of weeks, they've had the, uh, California plant shut down. So, uh, there's news out that they're getting ready to reopen it. They got some people coming back. So just keep that one on watch here. Um, I do have, um, on, um, uh, Tesla. I kind of think that they're trying to get the price back up to the 878 area. So just something to keep in mind going forward into uh, the earnings. So I'm, I'm still a little more bullish on Tesla going into earnings than I am bearish. Well, you got a lot more here, but I'm getting along on the video. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, basically, I, I really don't trade much earnings. Uh, I, I really don't. Um, but uh, I, I, I try to be very careful. And uh, so uh, basically going into this week here, it's very, very critical because, you know, you're going into, you know, with SPY having all these expirations this week, you know, you know, uh, they can really rock the volatility knowing all these expirations. You know, you have the Monday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Let's see. And see, is that right? Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. We well, have Friday expiration too, so that's that's there too. So keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, uh, that's Friday, I think. That's Friday there. Okay. So uh, I think there's four expirations though. On maybe it's the SPX that has four expirations. Uh, double check here. 
Uh, one second. Yeah, it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So definitely something to keep in mind going forward here. Uh, all these expirations on the SPX, four expirations on a five-day work week, that's going to add a lot of uh, uncertainty to the markets. And typically, I don't trade much during uh, earnings season. So just keep that in mind. Also, I'll just be doing my scalps and stuff. And this tops my list of the one stocks going into this week that I'm looking at trading. You know, all these stocks represent the high implied volatilities that, you know, I look for as a day trader. So, you know, you can just break these things down here. These, This is my top watch list uh, uh, other than trying to deal with directly with the earnings names. Uh, these here are the stocks that I actually watch. So, okay. Thanks a lot. And uh, like the video if you like it. Uh, please uh, share it on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to be 9662C. And make some comments below. I appreciate them. I appreciate all the feedback. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>